But in 1970, we moved to Illinois and hated it. The dirt just didn't taste good up there as it did down there. <laughs> for those of you who ain't good hives. But studied for seven years, studied everybody's religion because if this is my salvation, I want to get it right. So I did what the book said. I tried the spirit against the spirits. And when I came to the Israel God from the congregation of Israel to the Israel God, oh man, it was just, whoo. I couldn't wait to get home to tell my mom. Just couldn't do it. Couldn't wait to get home to tell my mom. And what made me stop going to her church? I just didn't want to go to her church no more. Didn't understand. Got baptized at a young age on a mourner's bench in the Baptist church. So when I got of age, I asked my mom, what is a Baptist? And she could tell me. She could not tell me. The average Baptist cannot tell you what a Baptist is. So I'm going to ask y'all, what is a Baptist? What do you call a person that works on cars for a living? Can't. That's a career and a job. A person that works on the pipes under your sink is a what? That's a career and a job. A person that works on the wires of your wall is a what? Career and a job. What was John doing in the Jordan River? He, was he sprinkling water or was he submerging in water? That is a biblical baptism. When you submerge, not sprinkle. Okay? So, the Lord put this lesson, it's not a new lesson, it's an old lesson, but I like to pull it out of the archives, and the title of this lesson is, Thy Will Be Done in Earth. It is in the model prayer for us, what's called the Lord's Prayer, or what I call the model prayer that God gave man to teach man how to pray. But, the theme of the lesson is based upon St. John, the 17th chapter. So, we, when we get to St. John, the 17th chapter, I want you to put your marker because we're going to be in and out of St. John, the 17th chapter during the duration of this lesson. But right now, let's go to Luke, the 22nd chapter. Luke 22. Luke 22. And we're going to read what Jesus told his disciples. And that includes all of us who believe in him of any race, of any nation, male or female, <coughs> people got this thing twisted up. To my own Israel gonna be saved, like them brothers were telling me. Only Israel gonna be saved, brother. I said, where was Israel at when the Lord told Adam, "Let us make man in our image after our likeness"? Didn't even exist, did it? Luke twenty-two, brother Jordan. We're gonna read verse twenty-eight. We're gonna pick this up at verse twenty-eight. Luke twenty-two and twenty-eight. Look what Jesus said. We're going to put Jesus on the witness. I love putting Jesus on the witness stand. Because the Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. Luke 22 and 28. When you get it, go ahead. And here are they which have continued with me in my temptation. Uh -huh. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father had appointed unto me. Now, look how he started this to the disciples that stayed with him, that didn't run away from him. They endured as long as they could. He said, you are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appointed to you a, a kingdom as my father had appointed to me. That's why the prophecy told you, he said, hey, the Lord, uh, he told you in Luke, the first chapter, that the angel came from heaven. The angel Gabriel came to Mary and said, hey, he's going to sit on the throne of his father David, which is really his own throne. It was already prophesied to the brothers, and I appointed to you a, a kingdom as my father had appointed unto me. Did y'all know that there are two kingdoms of God? Yeah. There are two kingdoms of God. Jesus is going to take over the kingdoms of this world. He will be called Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Run it with his saints a thousand years, and then the Father brings new Jerusalem down. That is the prayer that you pray when you say, Our Father, which art in heaven, thy kingdom come. That's the Father's kingdom. But to get to the Father's kingdom, you got to make it to the Son's kingdom, which is a thousand-year reign. Y'all got that? Yeah, okay, continue at verse 39. Skip all the way down to verse 39. And go ahead, Brother Jordan. And he came out uh -huh. and went, as he was one, to the Mount of Olives. Uh -huh. And his disciples also followed him. That was what he called his man cave. That's where Jesus hung out with his disciples, the Mount of Olives. Go ahead. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that you enter not into temptation. Pray that you enter not into temptation. 
But then you got that in the Lord's Prayer, though. And lead us not into what? Temptation. So you see how the Bible, that's why people say, why do you read that old King James Bible? That's because it's accurate. It is proven. And the testimony of Jesus is what? The spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy, sisters and brothers. The prophets wrote it. It's got to come to pass. No matter how you feel, what we think, None of that. Only thing that matters is what's written in this law, in this book and obedience to it. Okay? Read that 40 again. And when he was at the place, uh -huh. he said unto them, pray that ye enter not into temptation. Pray that you enter not into t t temptation. And that's what we pray for, Lord. When we're going through these times and these troubles, because all everything that happened to you is to try you and to tempt you. Everything that happened to you in your life is a, I have concluded that everything in my life is a test. You know how the commercial said, this is a test. This is only a test. <laughs> your whole life is a big test. And all you know in your whole life is good or evil. The devil didn't lie about that. It's a big test to see to who will overcome. That's why the promise is in Revelation, to whom so I will overcome, to he that overcome, but I grant to sit with me in my throne. So he, he has appointed you a position in his kingdom. Never promised you the Father's kingdom. Never that. Now let's go, let's go to St. John 17th chapter. When we get there, keep your father. St. John 17th chapter. So Jesus is praying and he's testifying to his father. Sisters and brothers, even on our behalf. St. <clears throat> John 17, we're going to read verses 1 and 2. St. John 17, let's go, Brother George. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven uh -huh. and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. And that's why he told us when we pray. When we pray, we say, Our Father, so if he's the uh, well, uh, uh, the uh, bishop of our salvation, we got to follow his lead. You know, he never told you to pray to him. He said, pray to the Father by asking in my name, because they share the same name, Jesus. Okay? These words that Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Go ahead and read. Thou hast given him power over all flesh, uh -huh. that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Now, if the Lord created man and everything, according to St. John, the first chapter, who are we to say that can't nobody else have, have salvation? He, if the book says that as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. How can you hate what you didn't create? Get rid of this hatred against other nations. There is no, the kingdom of, listen, the kingdom of God is not your emotion, it is righteousness. Amen. As thou has given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou has given him. Oh my gosh. Let's look at Matthew the 28th chapter. Keep your marker in St. John. 17th chapter. Let's go to Matthew the 28th chapter. Ooh, how I love that law. Matthew the 28th chapter. I'm going to try to do my best, Brother Baldwin, to keep my emotions in check. Because when you really believe this and the Lord doesn't open your eyes and you see this, man, and you realize how far we have fallen from God, you appreciate every breath and every minute. Matthew the 28th chapter. We go on 1 to 3, and then we go skip. When you get it, let's go, Brother George. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. Stop right there. So the Sabbath day is what number day? Seven. Seven. It's only seven days in a week. The only commandment in the Bible is in, in the law that starts with remember. But somebody came along and said, you know what? The prophets worried about it. They should think to change times and laws. See? So they're going to try to do that, and the whole world will wait for it. But guess what? Sin can't win playing God's game. So the first day of the week is Sunday. If you look it up, now now Wikipedia and everybody else is saying that Sunday, the Lord's Day, 
the seventh day of the week. But the Bible says what? See, at the end of the God, we don't deal with commentary. We deal with the scriptures. Okay? Read it again, my brother. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, uh -huh. came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. Uh -huh. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Man, an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and from heaven and rolled, came and rolled back the stone from the door. Man, this is, what stone? Well, Jesus was buried right in front of the sepulchre. Have y'all noticed they had to roll back the stone from the sepulchre? How come he could? How come he go to heaven like we've been talking about the churches? Yeah. My job as a minister is to make you think and make you read. Stop going by what people feel and what they say. You go to church your whole life in the Bible built, and you've been preached to. And not talk. Mm -hmm. Woo, he's a wonderful pastor. Like the preacher, Church of God preacher told me. Woo, Brother Julius. If I was in a God of evil, the devil would never have deceived me. <laughs> I said, what day did you go to church on, brother? He said, I'm going to miss a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I waited. I'm not mocking Sunday people. I come out of the Sunday church. <laughs> But then when you look up, the, but nobody else, and that's what we're going to do today. When we go out here and evangelize, we're going to ask people, what is the first day of the week? You ain't got to be scared because you can read it. And then you ask them, like they asked me, why you go to church on Saturday? I said, why you go on Sunday? <laughs> I can't read Saturday in the Bible. It's called the seventh day. I can't read Sunday. It is called the first day. So you don't have to be afraid because you have to have confidence in what's written in your God and in yourself. Y'all get that? Hold on to it. Don't never let it go. What verse is that, Brother George? Yeah, the verse Read it. Go ahead. His countenance was like lightning uh -huh. and his raiment white as snow. Man, always a male angel. I've never read a female angel. Nothing against women. But the Lord got a way of doing things, sisters and brothers. Skip down to verse 5. 5 and 6. Go ahead. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, uh -huh. Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. Now, that's the stone they had to roll back. They trying to uh, see any fear up in heaven, why they had to roll back the stone. That's why the dead don't go to heaven. The dead go to the grave. Have a nice little ceremony called a funeral. Put you in a nice little bed called a coffin. Take you to the cemetery, lower you back from the ground from which you came, just like uh, uh, Genesis, the third chapter said, but dust thou art. That's what you do when you go out there and evangelize. Read it to me. Read it to me what one time when you die, you go to heaven. It ain't there. It ain't there. Go ahead, brother. Verse 6. Yeah. He is not here. He is not here. Or he is risen. Because he got a right to ride because he came from heaven. Go ahead. As he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. Skip all the way down. Come and see where the Lord lay. That's where you lay dead, folks. But he was gone because the grave couldn't hold him. Only three days and three nights. Not three days. No, no, three days and three nights. Go ahead, brother. Skip down to verse 16. 16 to 18. When you get it, go ahead, brother Joy. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee. Because Judas had hung himself. Go ahead. Into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Yes. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. Uh huh. But some doubted. But some doubted. Because even his disciples, some of his disciples still doubted. Go ahead. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Because he had completed his mission. Go ahead. Go ye therefore and teach all. No, no. Teach that's Israel. Oh, See, without getting among the Israelites and the purple people leaders and so on and so forth, wait a minute. The books that teach all nations. Israel is just one of many nations. Go ahead, brother. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In other places, you are baptized in the name of Jesus because everybody, every male in here is of, they have the child of the Father and every male in here is somebody's son. And the Holy Ghost is an angel that stands in the presence of God. We can show you that more perfectly in other places at another time. 
Go ahead. The Holy Ghost is not God. He is sent from God. Go ahead, brother. What is that? Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Teaching them to observe all things. Does that mean that the dietary law? Did y'all know the Ten Commandments encompasses the dietary law? Didn't Jesus tell you this is the law of that which may be eaten and that which may not be eaten? Did y'all know that in order to be holy, you got to eat the food that's holy? Why y'all think Daniel in the first chapter of Daniel, he said he would not eat a uh, proposed in his heart or his mind that he would not defile himself with Nebuchadnezzar's menu. And I'm listening to these people tell myself, the wine that they drank was grape juice. The book said wine. Book said wine. Drink enough grape juice, your sugar gonna be hot. <laughs> we finished that? Uh, at the end of 20. Do it again, 20. Teaching them to observe all things. Teach all nations to observe all things. Go ahead. Whatsoever I have commanded you. Yes. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, sisters and brothers, a brother told me when the Lord come back, he gonna teach us. I said, if you get your glorified body, what would you need to learn? When you learn everything that the Lord wants you to know in this book. Right. He said, I've never hidden anything from you, Israel. People don't understand that. When Jesus came, he came to fulfill the first part of his three of his seven-year ministry. He only ministered for three and a half years. When he come back, he got another three and a half years of ministry to fulfill. When he come back, sisters and brothers, he's not coming directly into the land of Israel. Nonetheless, another time. Now, back to St. John, uh, the third chapter. This time, the third chapter of St. John. Good to believe in God, like the brother on the job told me. I believe it in a higher power. I just don't believe in no Jesus or, or, or Paul or Peter. Them. I said, it's okay. Shall your unbelief make the word of God of none effect? God forbid. Don't no matter. Don't no matter. It's already written. Unto me, every knee going to bow and every tongue going to confess. St. John 3, we're going to read 16. St. John 3 and 16. And this is, what I, this is what I like to use because the Lord's will is going to be done in earth. Heaven is straight because the rest breaker or the peace breaker got kicked out. All the drive-bys and killings and murders and, and the sins is happening on the earth, not up in heaven, what we call the third heaven or the heaven of heaven. St. John 3, my brother, and verse 16. Look how your God felt towards you. Go ahead. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. Brother told me God never loved this world. I said, then why is it written that he loved the world? When he said he loved the world, he loved his creation. How do I know? Genesis, the first chapter, he told you, and God looked and said everything that he saw was good, not just good, but very good. Why? Because sin had not entered into the world. Was the world created bad or did it become bad? It become bad. Because he created everything. And stood back and looked at his creation. And there was nothing. And that's why he rested. Why did God rest? Because there was nothing else to create. All the way over to 36. Verse 36. Go ahead and read it. He that believeth on he the Son. He's going to tell you again. Go ahead. He that believeth on the Son. Have everlasting life. You just But faith comes by here. You got to believe. But this brother gonna tell me I don't believe in God. I believe in a higher power. I said, you don't have to call it God. It's okay. If there is a creation, there has to be a creator. Your car just didn't pop into existence. Somebody created it. He that believes on the Son. Yeah. He, he, I'm sorry. I got yes, sir. Go ahead. He that believes on the Son uh -huh. have everlasting life. Because when you believe on the Son, you believe in the one that sent the Son. Go ahead. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, uh -huh. but the wrath of God abideth on him. And what is the wrath of God? Lake of fire. Lake of fire. The lake of fire. Remember, that's why the Bible said it had been better had you never been born than to come into this and fall away because the day that you come out of your mother's womb, you are here forever. You know, like forever, 
<laughs> you here forever. It's just a matter of where you're going to be. That's why Jesus said, I said before you, life and blessings, death and a curse, choose. Seven day Adventists, Jehovah Witnesses teach that God is not going to burn the people up forever. Then why did Revelation, the, uh, what is that, 20th chapter, they tell you where the beasts and false prophets are? They've been in there a thousand years. What they still doing in there if they ain't brought up? People don't, they just don't believe. But I do. That not, that's not a surprise. Israel is the priest. Israel is the priest. What verse was that, brother? Good. Now, one verse and say, go to St. John the 17th chapter. St. John, y'all still with me? St. Yeah. John the 17th chapter. When they say, make some noise. <laughs> I got one verse there. St. John 17. We're going to walk St. John 17 chapter down, sisters and brothers, because it is all about his will being done, the plan, the plan of the God here, and how Jesus came and executed it. St. John 17, Brother George, just give me verse 3. And this is life eternal. What is that? That they might not, that they might know thee, the only true God. In Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. How many we got there? Two. Two, Two and a God here. You're baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. The Father's name is Jesus. The Son, whose name was Jehovah, became, took on the name Jehovah, but when he came in the flesh, took on his Father's name, Jesus, and it is Jesus who sent the Holy Ghost that comes in the Father's name. Y'all got that? Amen. So now, we're reading what we just read in John 3, 16. And this is like you tell them that they might know thee, the only true God. That's why Jesus told Matthew 19, chapter, the, the rich young ruler, he said, why callest thou me good? There's none good, but what? But God. The only true God and Jesus Christ who died sent. Let's look at it, sisters and brothers. Proverbs and 30 chapter. Hold John 17. Proverbs, the 30th chapter. I've been working on trying to cut my time down because they don't let me do a three hour lesson. <laughs> I ain't trying to get fired, so I'm going to obey to obey is better than sacrifice. Proverbs, chapter 30. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 30. Tell you, you read this book, boy, you be up all night. Fall asleep in the chair. Proverbs 30. Brother Jordan. First four, let's look at it. Read it. Who have ascended up into heaven uh -huh. or descended? Who have gathered the wind in his fist? Who have bound the waters in a garment? Who have established all the ends of the earth? Yes. What is his name? What is his name? And what is his son's name? Thou canst tell. What is this? So we got us. How many is here? Two. What is his name? And what is his son's name? Y'all remember that uh, schoolhouse rock? Channel 7. Conjunction. What's your function? <laughs> and, but we got the word and here. That means that you're joining something. Okay? What is his name? And what is his son's name? Easy. Easy. Let's go to John the fifth chapter. St. John, the fifth chapter. Simple lesson. Amen. Simple lesson. You ain't got to speak your tongue, hoop power. The actors come in riding a, a big old cowboy, have people bring me in, sitting on a, a, a throne. Theatrics. St. John, chapter 5. Brother Jordan, we're going to pick up at verse 19. St. John 5 and 19. St. John 5 and 19. And let's look at it. When you get it, go ahead, my brother. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. Uh -huh. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. How can we just say the Holy Ghost too? Because it's only two in the Godhead. Only two, sisters and brothers. Amen. I can't do nothing but what I, of myself, but what I see the Father do. But what things so he doeth, the Father, these also doeth the Son likewise. 
That's why when you accept the Son, you accept the Father. Because Jesus came, came and told you in the flesh, the words that I speak are not mine, but the Father which sent me. These are the Father's words that we read, sisters and brothers. Man, 21, 21. Go ahead, brother. For as the Father raises up the dead, uh -huh. and quickeneth them, uh -huh. even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. That's why Jesus, I can't do nothing to my Father of myself, but what I see my Father do. That's why when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed three times and said, Father, Father, Father. Praying to his Father. He said, I know you always hear me. Oh, man. Verse 23, Brother Jordan, go ahead. That all men should honor the Son. Yes. Even as they honor the Father. Yes. He that honor not the Son, honor not the Father, which is in him. See, it's a package deal, sisters and brothers. Father and Son. The greatest two parents that man has known. The Father and the Son. Oh, my goodness. 26, brother. Go ahead and read. For as the Father have life in himself, yes. so have he given to the Son to have life in himself. That's why he told you, no man can take my life. I lay it down. I lay my life down, and I got the power to pick it back up again. Mm -hmm. That's why the council of, what's that, Nicaea, they were trying to find out, the Romans and the Greek side, they were trying to find out the, the godliness of Jesus. Was he God in the flesh? The book says he was full of the Spirit of God without measure. But he was a flesh and blood man, but he was embodied with the Spirit of God in him. The Word of God was in him. That's why he was called the Holy One of Israel, who knew no sin. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Let's go to Luke, the first chapter. Let's get us a name. Make sure you take this message out there on the road. You take it to your co-workers. That's how the church grows. I love y'all, Charlotte, but we got to get it into our own building. Brother Boy, wait on you. Y'all get look like y'all got the numbers. You got the numbers. Maintain the numbers. Go find your place. That way we can have our feast at our own place. Be as loud and as long as we want to. And don't, don't forget, when y'all get it, get it to grow. Design put. Give space to grow. Because the whole world will be coming. We got to teach all Charlotte. Y'all tell y'all, some of y'all went on a cruise and y'all saw that big old ship. Can y'all imagine Israel going back on ships like that? Luke 1. Let's look at the prophecy. Luke 1, 26. Come on, my brother. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee named Nazareth. Yes, like that, like, I can't believe his brother told me Nazareth never existed. I said, well, brother, Nazareth exists today. <laughs> Get your map. Maybe, brother, you in the dark ages. Come on. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. Uh -huh. Of the house of David. Of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the virgin's name was Mary. Skip down, my brother, to verse 30 to 32. Go ahead. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, uh -huh. for thou hast found favor with God. Uh -huh. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Because the name Jesus means salvation. It means salvage, savior. Y'all get that? Give you a little homework. That's going to really make you laugh. Google all the gods that were born December the 25th. On your own. They're going to have Jesus Christ on you. But the book don't give a date. The book does not give a birth date. Well, you don't acknowledge the birth of Jesus? I say, yes, I acknowledge the birth of Jesus. I just don't acknowledge the date that you set. Who gave you December 25th? You can't read that out of the Bible. It is not there. Not in the Bible. Uh-uh. Man, what was, what was that? 32. Go ahead and read it. He shall be great. He shall be great. He shall be called the son of the highest. And shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. Now, he shall be great. But you got people saying that that name is not great. So I did a little test. On your own, my teachers, I like to give up. 
I like to evangelize in my teachings. On your own, Google how many times the name Jesus is written in the New Testament. Somebody Google that for me real quick. Have a little fun on the way. That's what I call my fun. When I say fun, I enjoy what I do. I got the greatest job in the world. Somebody tell me, Google it, and tell me how many times the name Jesus is written in just the New Testament. <clears throat> Nine hundred and forty-two times. Say again. Nine hundred and forty-two. Nine hundred and forty-two times. Find me any other name that's written more than nine hundred and forty-two times. He shall be great, right? How do we know? Because the book said he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. So the father gave the son his own name. He just didn't put junior on it. So like you have a son. You name your son after you. Actually greater than 1,200 times. Yeah, I read that in other places after 1,200 times. But you have it's an exhaustive study, but you can do it. But to prove the word of God, you understand? No book can prove the Bible. The Bible will prove all books. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God, which is the Father, shall give unto him the throne of his father David, because he came through the lineage of David, being a Jew. Okay? Let's go to Acts the fourth chapter. Remember the name Jesus, right? Acts 4. Acts of the Apostles. Acts chapter 4. And begin, Brother Jordan, we're going to pick this up at 1 or 2. And skip. When you get it, my brother, go ahead. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees uh -huh. upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus. Now these are, these are Hebrew Israelites. Grieved. These are Hebrew Israelites. The Sadducees, who did not believe in the resurrection, the Pharisees did. But the Sadducees, being grieved that the apostles taught in the name of Jesus. Boy, boy, you think they rejoice because the Romans were ruling over them. Go ahead, brother. And preach through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Mm. Being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection. How can the Pharisees and the Sadducees then do that? I mean, they said to Moses, didn't they? Yeah. How come they didn't do it? Because everything that Jesus came to do, he had to fulfill it. Go ahead and read. What verse, verse is that? Uh, verse 10. Skip down to verse 10 and go ahead. Thank you, brother. Go ahead. Be it known unto you all, uh -huh. and to all the people of Israel, yes. that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him do this man stand here before you all. He said, by the name of Jesus Christ. Christ is not his last name. Christ means anointed one. That's a title. The name of Jesus is the name. Christ means, and Nazareth is where he grew up and came from. He was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wasn't he? Yeah. But he grew up in Nazareth. I was born in Osceola, Arkansas. But I grew up in Chicago. Okay? So it's the same thing. By the way, what was Mary's last name? Israel. Israel. What was Joseph's last name? Israel. What was David's last name? Israel. Why was Mary called Magdalena? She's from Magdalena. Say it again. She's from the city of Magdalena. Why does Judas call Iscariot? Because he was from the town of Cariot in Israel. There was a man from the land of Uz whose name was what? A city. My people are destroyed for lack of what? Knowledge. That's why the Israel of God is the institution of higher knowledge. No accidents in the Bible is written. It is written. Get away from the funny Bibles like the 
RSB. Changes, 20,000 changes in. You ever finish that, Brother Jordan? Go to verse 12. No, 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 no. Continue to 12. Because I'm going to show the people something. Because Israel today is kicking on the name of Jesus. Somebody's name is Yahweh. Well, brother, we entrepreneurs know what you are is a captive. I ain't no captive. I'm an entrepreneur. Okay, let me see the expiration date on your driver's license. I guarantee you, you got to renew it because you're up under somebody else's government. Go ahead, brother, verse 11. This is the stone which was set at not of you building, uh -huh. which has become the head of the corner. He is the head of the corner. He is the head of the church. He is the bishop of our souls. Go ahead, brother. Neither is there salvation in any other. Uh -huh. There is none other name under heaven. Ain't heaven. no other being, and there's no other name given under heaven whereby we might be saved. Go ahead. Heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Because that is the greatest name given among men while we devil's Man, that's why the name Jesus means salvation or savior. And nobody wants to believe it. But you're going to believe it. You're going to accept it. You're going to bow down to it. You're going to confess it. And if you reject it, you're going to confess it. And then you're going to throw you in the fire. Mm. Brother Julius, you're a doom and gloom teacher. No, I'm a watchman and a warn. Back to St. John. St. John 17. Y'all still with me? Yeah. I ain't trying to frighten nobody off. To my all up. Somebody told me all I ever teach is doom and gloom. I should teach the more weightier matters of the law, like grace and mercy, all of them. But that's not my subject matter. The book said, teach them the fear of the Lord is to depart from what? Evil. Everything else is encompassed around that. St. John 17, now we're going to read verses 4 and 5, Brother Jordan. St. John 17, verse 4 and 5. Look what Jesus said when he came to do. Go ahead. I have glorified thee on the earth. Uh -huh. I have finished the work which thou gavest me. When he me. dropped his head on the cross, what did he, before he dropped his head, what did he say? It is finished. What? What he came to do. Not what we. Uh -uh. It is finished. I have finished the work. And what was his work, brother? Go ahead. And now, O oh Father, Glorify thou, thou me with thine own self, uh -huh. with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. That's why the Bible says, says in St. John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. I got an A plus in English, sisters and brothers. I understood this. And the Word was with God. So we got two beings that inhabit the estate called the third heaven, or the heaven of heavens, who What's together? Without beginning, without end. Man. Mm. Read that. That did something to me, Joy. Do it again. Do it again. Yeah, do it again. I have glorified thee on the earth. Yes. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Go ahead. And now. See, he had Jesus had an assignment, sisters and brothers. Go down and salvage that which was lost in the Garden of Eden. Go ahead, brother. Oh, Father. Yes. Glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Wait a minute. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I always use that when I deal with the doctors and nurses in the hospital where I work at. I says, how many heavens is it? It's only one. Okay. Take your phone and Google. Go to your KJV. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. One heaven, one earth. Now, Genesis chapter 2 says what? Thus the heavens were finished and all the host of them. All of a sudden, they turned their Bible back and forth. You're trying to be tricky. Yeah. <laughs> then I take the first king of 8th chapter and start at verse 22. And Solomon spread forth his hand toward heaven above, before all the congregation of Israel. So he got his hands up. I said, now scroll down to verse 27. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? The answer is yes, because you keep saying thy kingdom come, that we be done on earth. Our job saw the holy city descending down from heaven, out of heaven, to the earth. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. All of a sudden, you got him. Where's your card at, brother? Every last one of us in here, we got to get some cards. Brother Bob, you got to make sure they get cards. 
keep these cards with you, keep these uh, flyers with you, sisters and brothers. The book said, be ready to preach, be apt to teach, be ready to preach. Prove your ministry. The Lord said, I made you fishers of men. Women, fish the women. Don't be scarred. <laughs> Did we finish that? What we are doing? We finished that now. Genesis chapter 1. Let's look at it. I gave it away, but we're going to read it for you anyway. Genesis chapter 1. I have finished the work that thou gave me to do. I have glorified thee on the earth. Genesis 1 and 26. Look at the plan of God. Remember the title, Thy will be done in earth. 1 and 26. Go ahead and pay attention to words. Us. Our. Go ahead and read. And God said, let us make man in our in our image. Let us make Israel. Man. Uh-huh. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Highlight dominion. To dominate. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. Uh-huh. And over and over the cattle. And over all the earth. Uh-huh. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, so your whole life in this flesh and blood body is to learn how to rule and reign. Let them have dominion. You can, don't you know we have people, you go to the aquarium, they train dolphins and whales. You can train, you go to the zoo, they train lions and tigers and bears, right? Because God's put all that in man's hands. Go ahead, brother. What verse? Uh, 27. Skip down to verse 27. Go ahead. So God created man in his own image. Uh -huh. In the image of God created he him. Uh -huh. Male and female created he them. Because sisters and brothers, you are still man. It is called mankind. You are the female. But you are still, the, the, the species is man, but the gender is male and female. But the whole body is called mankind. Oh my goodness. Ooh, I love this. I love it. Verse, uh, what we at? That was the end, was the end of that? Yeah. So now that's what the Lord, male and female, created here. We made in the image of God, in the likeness of God, but not out of what God is made out of. God is a spirit. We are flesh. What is the difference? Spirit don't die. Spirit don't die. You got two things in this creation, souls and spirit. Spirit, the Father, the Son, and all the angels, be they holy or unholy, are spirits. Don't die. Can't kill them. But you can punish spirit for them. And souls, man and the beast. If you cut a man, you're what? Bleed. And if you cut an animal, you're what? Bleed. Bleed. Souls and spirit. Pay attention now. Your God. Only two things in the creation. Souls and spirit. But Brother Julius, you don't believe in in uh, uh, extraterrestrial life, I believe in what I see. I don't care about what's out there in outer space. I live on the earth. So stop spending your money on trying to go to Mars. You, you can't live there. Because the book says he created the earth to be inhabited. How about that? <laughs> well, what about the earth? You think the earth is flat? You think it's so? Yeah. Uh, what you think about the flat Earth? I said I don't think about it at all. <laughs> <laughs> what shape is the moon, y'all? Full moon. What shape is the full moon? It's the sun. The Lord says he's set up on the circle of the Earth. I don't care if the Earth is a parallelogram. <laughs> I'm just trying to get to the kingdom. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10, Brother George. Y'all still with me? Oh, yeah. I pray it gets better. Hebrews chapter 10. Man, I marvel just getting in an airplane. I marvel, sisters and brothers. I used to cry to Brother Boy about getting in an airplane because I never flew before 2012. Wow. When they made me a teacher in 2012, I used to complain. He said, You better be quiet, Julie, before I put you on a boat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I did the Joe thing. Joe's, I'm going to cover my mouth. 
Hebrews chapter 10. We will read verses 5 and 6. Hebrews 10. And pick it up in verse 5, my brother. Look what Jesus said. Go ahead. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, uh -huh. he saith, The sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared me. Uh -huh. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Because it was not supposed to be. Nothing was supposed to die. But when Adam and Eve sinned, they, they disobeyed God. Sin is the transgression of the law. Of all the trees of the, of the uh, you may freely eat. But the tree of uh, the trees of the garden you may freely eat. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you should not eat of it. For the day that you eat of it, you shall surely, surely is an assurity. You shall surely die. So they sinned. And what came from sin? Yeah. 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 But what else comes from sin? Embarrassment. Change. Separation. Oh, Remember, Adam and Eve had their children outside the garden. And they was naked and were not afraid. So fear come from sin. Look at all the things that come from sin. Because once you start seeing mama, what? Let me get back in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all know how I do it. When you start sinning, there's no level of lowliness that you will not sink to. You do anything. I don't care, like the brother, I get that. These brothers keep talking about they saved already. Then why did Ezekiel the 18th chapter say that when a righteous man turn from his righteousness and do that which is wicked, he shall die in them. If you saved already, then you should not be able to sin. And if you saved already, why are you in church? Where's your glorified body? They cannot dis dis discern saved from a deliverance. How is it that the Lord saved Israel out of Egypt and then turned them and killed a lot of them in the wilderness? So much for you being an Israelite being saved. Why don't you just believe what Jesus said? He that endured until the end, the saved, shall be saved. What verse number do I just finish six? Skip down to verse 10 and go ahead. By the which will Oh, by the way, by the way, I apologize. By the way, when Adam and Eve sinned, what did they dress themselves up with? Fig leaves. But what did God dress them with? Skin. Because the fig leaves didn't do any good to take away sin. It could not make an atonement for sin. When sin is committed, blood had to be shed. That's why one drop, one drop of Jesus' blood is worth more than every man, woman, and child that has ever been born. The Bible said, by his stripes, we are healed. The book says, while we were yet in our sin, for the body, Christ died for us. And all he asked us to do is remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. That's right. And keep my commandments. Not a big thing. Anything is hard when you don't want to do it. I'm going to say that again. Anything is hard when you don't want to do it. The Lord said, I will put no more on you than you can what? Brother going to tell me. Brother, we can't keep God's commandments in a strange land. I said, but you can sin in it, huh? <laughs> Well, my brother Jordan, uh, we started this team. Really, brother. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And what did he do at verse 9? When he came in the flesh and they were under the veil, which was set up for sacrificial for forgiveness of and atonement for sin. When he came in the flesh, what did he do at verse 9? Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Uh huh. He taketh away the first. Yes. That he may establish the second. Because the blood of bulls and goats could not take away sins. So now you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Baptism doesn't save you. Baptism puts you up under a covenant. Okay? Because that covenant and the covenant always, always, Moses speaking the blood, didn't he? On the books, didn't he? The covenant is always ratified by the blood. The Ten Commandments is not the covenant. The Ten Commandments is the terms of the covenant. But 
The shed blood of Jesus is what ratified. If you love me, do what? Because you're going to appreciate what he came and did for you on the cross. He shed his blood. Did that make sense to y'all? Yes. Because God is the God that makes sense. He is not a vain God, sisters and brothers. So the terms of the covenant is the Ten Commandments. The covenant is the blood. The terms of it, if you keep our commandments, don't steal, don't kill. Oh, by the way, that's the real, what I call the real social media. Social media is how news is distributed or words are distributed, and social is how people live among each other. So the Ten Commandments is the original social media. First five, how man should approach God. Don't have no other God before me. Don't make no graven image. That's why the Catholic Ten Commandments is different from the Bible Ten Commandments. They removed the second commandment because the second commandment in the Catholic Bible says you could bow down and worship idols. Wow. The Ten Commandments said, what we read? Brother Jordan read it to us. We all read it together. Thou shalt not bow down with no great images. All images are not bad. But when you attribute them to God, you just cross over to idolatry. <laughs> Y'all got that? Yes. Just learning something on the way to learning something. So therefore, read it again, Brother Jordan. Uh, sorry, nine, nine and ten. Nine. Yeah, nine and ten together. Go ahead, brother. Then said he, uh -huh. Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He take away the first that he may establish the second. Uh -huh. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So once for all. So when Jesus died, what was terminated? Animal sacrifice. Animal sacrifice. Because the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin. Only the shed blood of Jesus could take away sin. Amen? Amen? It's all that simple. It is all that simple. Let's go to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews chapter 10. We already there? Okay, let's go to John, the 19th chapter. I'm getting ahead of myself. I got to cross that out. John, the 19th chapter. St. John, the 19th chapter. St. John, the 19th chapter. I invited some people to the Israel of God in Riverdale for my job. And they said, we're looking for a church that can, uh, that's teaching the true word of God. I gave them a card and they came for a month. After a month, I didn't see them no more during that month. And then after a month, I saw them. I said, brother, sister. And they were hugging the wife. I said, uh, I have to see you guys. Everything all good? Uh, we, don't, uh, we can't come to y'all church no more. So, uh, wow, but there's something that we did wrong, they should y'all do too much reading. Oh. We're looking for a praise and worship. We're looking for more praise and worship. Praise and worship has its place. But in all you're getting, get you what? Wisdom and knowledge. Okay? So, hey. Hey, some gonna come, some gonna go, but God bless them all. Uh, you know what's going to bring them back? Prophecy. The times, as they get worse and worse. Mm -hmm. There is no perfect church. You can lead the Israel of God. It's not going to stop prophecy. Artificial intelligence is not going to stop prophecy. Brother told me, artificial intelligence is on its way. I said, you too late, brother. It started. <laughs> what's that, first computer? 1946? You late. <laughs> look at the, look at the smartphone you got. Look at your smart TV. Right. It's already here, right? But it's not gonna stop prophecy. John nineteen, Jordan, verse sixteen, eighteen. When you get it, go ahead. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. Uh huh. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. Golgotha. So therefore. Sister, brother, was he wearing a cross or was he carrying that cross? Yes. See? And what is the purpose of the cross? Who set the cross up? And who they get it from? Who had the first cross? The ancient who? With the little handle on it. There you go. They had the ump, didn't they? See, y'all have to understand, Rome is that dreadful and terrible beast. Rome would come... They let you worship your old nasty gods. 
absorb you. Because all they wanted to do was your allegiance to the empire, your taxes. See? And how did the Romans crucify? How did the Romans kill people through crucifixion? They would torture you, beat you, break your legs. <coughs> they couldn't break Jesus' legs because the prophecy had to be fulfilled. And then somebody going to ask on question, where's that question and answer? But they said that they put a nail through his hand and through his feet. Is your fingers a part of your hand? Can I, if I pierce the web between your fingers, I pierce your hand, but not your bone, did I? Yes. Same thing between your toes. You got a web, right? Yes. If the book said a bone in his body should not be broken, then it ain't going to be broken. The cross is not created to wear. The cross is an image of Roman capital punishment of torture and suffering. Oh, oh y'all know the Assyrians did that too? They would stake you. That's the way they killed you. They would stake you, run the stake up your rear end out, the, out your mouth and scare you alive. The Romans just perfected it. People have always been doing stuff like that. But ain't nobody pays attention because you don't study. And when you look up stuff, you'd be surprised. A whole lot of stuff leave the Rome, but they get it from somewhere else. What Rome got, the Greeks, the Romans had to actually go back and learn up under the Greeks. The Roman students had to go and actually learn up under the Greeks. Alexander the Great, the third world emperor, he wanted to Hellenize or Greek culture arise. Culture, how do you say that? Get the whole world Greek culture. That's why your pastor said in the Greek, in the Greek, in the Greek. Okay? What we at, Joe? Uh, verse 18. Go ahead and read it. Where they crucified him uh -huh. and two other with him uh -huh. on either side, one and Jesus in the midst. Skip down to verse 28 and read it. 28 and go ahead. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, uh -huh. that the scripture might be fulfilled. Let the scripture see the testimony of Jesus and in the spirit of prophecy, which is written in Revelation, sisters and brothers. Everything had to be fulfilled. That's why he said, I have finished the work that thou gavest me to do. Go ahead, bro. Read that again. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished. Everything that he came to do was accomplished. He had one more thing to do. I thirst, and they had to give him benefit of God. Read, brother. That the scripture might be fulfilled. Uh huh. Saith, uh huh. I thirst. He said, I thirst. Skip down to verse 30. Go ahead. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. And then he gave up the brother life, which is the, uh, the ghost. So, therefore, he said, It is finished. But did he tell you in John 17, It is finished. I have finished the work that thou gavest me to do. That's why the Bible is like a puzzle that you put together and get the big picture. But you got to study to show thyself approved, right? And how did the book says in Isaiah 28? To whom shall we teach knowledge? Those who are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, right? You got to have a sincere milk of the word, and you got to go here a little and there a little. Somebody asked me, Brother Julius, how did you study? I couldn't even answer. I couldn't answer because there's so many ways to do it. I just pick up the book. Brother Bowie came along and taught us that you, the best way to learn the Bible is by subject and title. Line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, and boom, the word of God explodes. Because now people are getting understanding, which they did not want you to have in the dark ages. Okay? Well, that's the end of that, Brother Jordan? Yes, sir. That was verse 30. Good. Mm -hmm. Back to St. John, the 17th chapter. Back to St. John, the 17th chapter. The saga continues. John 19, this time, Brother Jordan, we're going 16 to 18. 16 to 18. Would you get it, my brother? Go ahead and read. We read that one, brother. We read that one? John 17. We read, oh, okay. John 17. I'm sorry. John 17. Whew. I'm caught up in my own lesson. Verse 5, 17 to 5. Go ahead. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with uh -huh. the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Before the world was. So now, this is how y'all going to go out there, and this is how we're going to evangelize. You're going to say, when did Jesus come into existence? Ask the people, when did Jesus come into existence? Did he come when Mary was here? 
or was he with the Father? See? They, they, these questions are not asked in the Sunday church. They're just not asked. St. John, the first chapter. Back all the way up to the first chapter. Let's read it again. We quoted it earlier, but this time we're going to read it to you. Give me back the glory that I had with thee before the world was. John 1 and 1. John 1 and 1, Brother Jordan. Let's go. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He said, give me back the glory that I had with you before the world was. Go ahead. The same was in the beginning with God. Uh-huh. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Man, and then we read in Luke, the first chapter, that the angel Gabriel sent him, uh, sent, uh, came to Mary, and told her the greatest message, that you will have a son, but then he's going to be great. He's going to have a kingdom, right? Get down to verse 10. Look when that happened, when he came into flesh. Go ahead, 10. He was in the world. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. Uh huh. And the world knew him not. And the world didn't know him. That's why Jesus asked the scribes and Pharisees and asked his disciples, Whom do the people say that the Son of Man is? Continue at verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. He came unto his, that's why he came to the Jews. He had to come through the tribe of Judah. He came to his own today. Pardon me. If you look at the nation of Israel today, all you hear is one tribe, right? The Jews, the Jews. So I asked him on my job, if you are Jewish, where's the rest of the tribe? Where's the rest of your brothers? Where's your, where's your older brother? In 70 AD, when Rome came and got us, took us out of the land, who, was, who helped them? That's what the book of Obadiah is about. The whole book of Obadiah. And Ezekiel tell you what Edom did to us. Cut the babies out the stomachs of the pregnant women. And if they cried, if somebody cried, they will take you and turn you over to the Romans. Your brother, who said you stole their birthright. But when we read their history, they sold their birthright. <laughs> then they want all of Holy Land over there. When in the ancient days, all tribes had their portion except Levi because Levi was the priest of all the tribes. Somebody got identity theft, called themselves you, and you are called African American. Breaking your neck to get into the Irish parade, the St. Patrick's Day parade, everybody else's parade, and ain't nobody trying to get into your parade. Right. Nothing against nobody. It's just the way it is. My people are destroyed for lack of what? Nah. They have no knowledge, sisters and brothers. They have no knowledge. So this is just one of the land of my captivities. You go to Jamaica, another one. St. Thomas, another one. Cuba, another one. In the Caribbean, rest of the tribes is scattered on the European and Eastern European continents. So my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Did we finish that, Jordan? Let's go to St. Let's back to St. John, the 17th chapter, and we got to do verse 8. St. John 17 and verse 8. And when you get it, my brother, let's go. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and I have known surely that I came out from thee, uh -huh. and they have believed that thou didst send me. Remember, to those who believe on Jesus gave me power to become the sons of God. What did he give them, sisters and brothers? The words of eternal life. The words of eternal life. He said, for I have given unto them the word which thou gavest me. Remember, Jesus said, the word that I speak are not mine, but my Father which sent me, right? <clears throat> mm. And they have received them and have known surely in other words, when you should, that means you really believe. And he said that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Exodus the 20th chapter. Hold this. Exodus the 20th chapter. Genesis, Exodus. 
Exodus to the chapter. I love this. And get, I have given them the words which thou gavest me. Exodus 20, read verse 1. Go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying. Who spake all these words? Uh, what did he say, brother, brother Jordan, in verse 18? At verse 18. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpets and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they were moved and stood afar off. Go ahead. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Uh -huh. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you. But God has come to prove you what? And that, and that his fear may be before your faces, that he sin not. Because the fear of the Lord is to depart from evil. The Ten Commandments is not sin. First John 3, 4 says sin is the transgression of the law. The Ten Commandments are <laughs> identifying what sin is. Don't steal. Don't commit adultery. Honor your mother and your father. The Ten Commandments identify what sin is. First, first few, so God won't hurt us and how to approach him. And the rest of them, how man live among men. Honor that mother and that father. Don't steal. Don't kill. That means do no murder. Don't covet. And, that, and by the way, coveting is an attitude. That's a mindset. You're like, like Mike. If I can be like Mike, how about like God? I want to be like God. Yeah. I think that fits better. Verse 22. 22, George. And Go the, ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh -huh. Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Yes. Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. See, I, I gave you words from heaven. Didn't the Ten Commandments come from heaven? Yeah. I gave you the words. Then I. During the process of time, I gave the same verse to my disciples, and I told my disciples, go here to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Did y'all know that at one time the whole earth kept the Sabbath day? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Ain't that something? Yeah. Where did this separation come from? Man. Man. They said it should be a separation between church and state. I totally disagree with that. You know why? Because when the government went bad in ancient Israel, who did the Lord send? He sent the prophet, didn't he? And the prophet, did he send the prophet right. to the king? That's right. What did he say? Come as out peacefully? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the, the problem with the world today and with the government today is the United States has gone from God. Well, little God that they didn't know. But they keep saying, God bless America. He did. After World War II, America was the greatest nation on the planet. But in every civilization, in every civilization, when any nation starts out with God being the head and depart from God, it cannot stand. That's right. A nation divided against itself, what? It cannot stand. Cannot stand. They're like a people divided against itself, cannot stand. So now, if you separate church from state, you go down. Now, you cannot govern your house because the government says that you can't discipline your child, but the Lord says spare the rocks for the child. Mm -hmm. So now your child grows up to be a wild person and become target practice for the police. Mm -hmm. And then the first thing they're going to come is what kind of upbringing did they have? What? Yes. You hypocrite. <laughs> So now, how could you separate church from state when the state is supposed to be led by the church? But when the church is corrupt and take bribes, it can't stand. That's why the former president said, I want to make America what? But then, he can't because he got boy, boisterous and bold and a bragger. Talking about he done more for the people than Jesus did. All of a sudden, he go down, don't he? Yep. Pride come before what? Whoa. Woo. Woo. 
Can we finish that, George? Let's go to St. John 6 and 63. One verse. John 6 and 63. <clears throat> Bible is when you buy a new car, what's in the glove box? Amen. What's the proper name of it? Owner's bag. The Bible is your owner's bag for salvation. The Ten Commandments is for life, for liberty, for justice, for peace, for God. Being a Christian is a way of life and an attitude. It's just like tithing. Tithing is a commandment. It's an attitude. How do I know it's an attitude? Because the Lord loves a what kind of gift? Cheerful yeah. yeah. gift. Yeah. But if your attitude suck, then you are no different than Cain. <coughs> Remember, times and offering started Cain and Abel. Abel gave a good offering. His first group, his best, his first, his attitude to a God was wonderful. Abel's attitude, I mean, Cain's attitude, was opposite. And the Lord gave him a chance. He said, why is your countenance falling? If you do well, it'll go well for you. <laughs> if not, what lies at the door? Sin. 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 That's why you can't serve two masters. Whether you go to church or not, you're serving somebody. You don't even know it. You don't know it. You don't know it. Whether you go to church or not, you're serving somebody. That's why I did the lesson. If you fall away from God, the devil will catch you. He ain't waiting on you. What was the first devil cast out of? Not the synagogue. When you go to church, Satan's going too. He already there waiting on you. That's why he had to cast the demon out the synagogue because. You got a whole innumerable, one third of an innumerable amount of angels who are professional walkers. Mm -hmm. They know what you're doing. Like the sister on the job told me, Jordan, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I'm choked up. Excuse me. Brother Julius. My fall allergies. Brother Julius, she says, <laughs> the Lord told me to tell you, he made me a proper guess. <laughs> told me to tell you that somebody in your house is sick. <laughs> I said, really? <laughs> and he said to tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> she said, yes, somebody in your house is sick, and I'm a proper guess. I asked the question, I said, sister, where is your hair cover? <laughs> 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 Where your head coming at? What do you mean? First Corinthians, you have a chapter said, when a woman is praying, prophesy her head should be what? Come. I wage you. You're doing two weeks. And your husband is your co-pastor. So now you the head and he's the tail. Where we at, Joy? Don't talk too much. Read it. Read it. I get on that airplane. It was dry air. And my room was cold. And I had to call somebody up to fix my air condition. And I didn't get that much sleep, but I'm good. So thank you. I apologize. Read 63. John 6 and 63. Go ahead. It is the spirit that quickens. Uh -huh. The flesh profits nothing. Mm -hmm. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. That's why the Ten Commandments is spiritual. That's why the Word of God is spiritual. You can't kill it. Go ahead, burn the book. But right here, what we supposed to have here? Eat the book. Eat the book. When the drama come, you ain't got to worry about what you're going to say. The Lord said, I'm going to give you a, a mouth that can speak that they can't resist nor gain say. Just put the book on that's why Jesus said, I remember Brother Stern used to teach us all the time. Even if it costs you your life, in death you win. Don't worry about what you're going to think. Don't worry about what you're going to say. Because the book is right here. Why do you think we know what we know? Acts 2, Judges 2, uh, 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 
That's the second chapter in Joel, the second chapter. In the last days, I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon my young men and my old men and my handmaids. And they shall what? Prophesy. Prophesy. That means to speak that which is already written. Why? Because you can't add to the word or you can't take away from it. Just speak what's written. So if you lead the Israel of God, you might not agree with what we teach or uh, some against a brother or a sister or your senior pastor. Just preach the gospel. If what you got is so good, it's going to stand. If not, it's going to come to nothing. Too many people, I've, I've seen a whole lot of people come to the Israel of God and they got to beef with something, Brother Bowie or whatever case, may, or whatever reason they leave. Preach the gospel. I don't have no ill feel, feeling because the Bible told you some going to fall away from the truth. Mm -hmm. We would love to hold everybody. But we know it is already written in a great house. There are vessels of what? Oh, so what do you want to be? You want to be a wheat or a tear? See? Because guess what? You stand here. It's wonderful. If you leave. It's not going to stop prophecy. It is not going to stop prophecy. Don't try to be friends with your loved ones or your neighbors in the sense of spiritual. Don't try to be friends with them. You tell them the truth. A man's enemy should be those of what? His own house. And who is your neighbor? Anybody that's next to you, your husband, your wife, it doesn't matter. Preach the gospel. Take the book, stand on the book. Stand on the book. I had uh, a brother uh, call me from someplace in Houston last week. Two weeks ago, I want to say, a week and a half ago. And the brother, uh, they, call, they called the class, and the class called me at work and had me talk to the brother. He said, I'm by myself. He was a Gentile in Texas. He said, I'm by myself. I've been following the Israel of God for six years. I said, no, brother, you have a spiritual family. Who said it again? Jesus told you, I would never leave you nor forsake you. You have a spiritual family, whoever you are. You got a spiritual family. You're not by yourself. You're not by yourself. So, Brother Will, I've got to tell you, Brother Will, we did a conference call with the brother. We sent him to, I don't know if it's the Beaumont class, I believe we sent him. He was there this past Sabbath. Last Sabbath, he was there. Talked to the brother for an hour on my drive home. That was one of the greatest rush hour drive I ever had. <laughs> because it was traffic was slow, bumper to bumper, five miles an hour. But every word I enjoyed from the brother. And then I said, brother, I can't wait to meet you so I can hug you. Ain't no love in the Israel of God. Then be the love that you want to see. Okay? Let's stop this. Be the love that you want to see. What we at, Jordan? Okay, read it. I pray for them. St. John, the 17th chapter. St. John 17. We're going to see if God loves everybody. And do he pray for everybody? Go ahead and read. I pray for them. Yes. I pray not for the world. So Jesus don't pray for everybody? He said, I pray not for them. I pray not for what? Wait, read that again. I pray for them. Uh -huh. I pray not for the world. I pray not for the world. Because the world is wicked. What three things exist in the world? Say it again. Lust of the eyes. What is it? The pride of life. And the lust of the what? That's all you see on TV today. Pay attention to the television program. It is the lust of the eyes, it is the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Now the pride people got a whole month now, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> See? Now they got the Queen James, Queen James Bible out. Y'all heard of that one? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Queen James. An abomination before the Lord. Yes. yes. Yeah. Inventors, like the Bible says, inventors of evil things. We finish that, George? I'll start back. Do it again for me. I pray for them. Uh -huh. I pray not for the world. Uh -huh. But for them which thou hast given me, for they are dying. For they are dying. And that's who you want to belong to. You want to belong to the God of Israel. Come on, let's go to Luke, the 22nd chapter. 
Luke 22. That was a profound, and people get mad at me on my job. Can you come and bless the food? We're not starting this celebration without you. I said, how did I become the priest of my department? <laughs> <laughs> it was tra I'm a transporter, inpatient transporter. It was transportation week at my, at my hospital. We, we can't do this left. We can't start this without you. Now, you got to say something. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we receive all things with thanksgiving. The Bible said, receive all things with thanksgiving. Right. I didn't pray with that food. Right. That was it. Yeah. We ain't never heard nothing like that. Yeah. <laughs> you want to see more? I did like Jesus said, come and see. Right. I can't pray, pray over that. And the thing about it is, they have all the shrimp and everything on the table. Mm -hmm. And they, my supervisor said, nope, don't put that on this plate. He ain't going to eat that. He don't eat that. So she made my own batch of oxtails. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We know like some oxtail stew. <laughs> and they said, I can't eat that. That's too close to that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, but you're eating the ham. You're eating that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This is easy. Let me eat that. <laughs> I tell you, boy. Y'all find somebody, then they won't be. Can you get the Christmas tree down off the shelf for us? I said, no. But you're tall. I said, get you a stool. Hey, I, I <laughs> Find another tall person that keep that. I don't do that. I ain't going to strip with your hands. Luke 22, Jordan. I'm going to have too much fun. 31 and 32. Luke 22 and 31. When you get it, go ahead. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you that he may sift you as we. Uh -huh. But I have prayed for thee. Thy faith Wait a minute. Life. He said in John the 17th chapter, I pray not for the world, but I pray for those that thou hast gave me. Now, the Lord the Father gave Jesus Peter. So he keeping his own word and praying for those who belong to him. Y'all, y'all see how St. John the 17th is going. That's why I titled the lesson that will be done in earth. Go ahead, brother. Read that again. But I have prayed for thee, uh -huh. and that thy faith fail not. Uh -huh. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. And that's what we tell everybody that comes to the Israel of God. When you come into the knowledge of the truth, learn, and you get circumcised. If you're a man and get uh, uh, baptized in the name of Jesus, and if you're a woman, get circumcised in the in the flesh, in, 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 the, in the heart, in the mind. Hey, go out and teach others. Let the people don't be ashamed of the gospel. Let the people see what you have been learning. Just like you know where you're going tomorrow, they may not know where you're going. They know you're not at home. Where are you going? Girl, I'm keeping the Sabbath day. Sabbath day? I thought Sunday was the Sabbath day. No, Sunday is the first day of the week. Oh, man. Where are you going, brother? Hey, I'm going to class. Why are you going to church on Sunday? It's the first day of the week. Look at your calendar. Go look at the calendars. They start off Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right. Friday, Saturday. And then it starts all over. Now they're working on you, like the, uh, the European nurse on the job. She told me, well, in Europe, we do it this way here. I said, that's the start of your business week. <laughs> that is the start of your business week. But the first day uh, then, uh, worldwide is Sunday. See? See? But she didn't know. I know that she's Roman. So I got nothing against her. She know she is a product of her environment. She's a product of her environment, sister brothers. That's why we cannot belittle anybody. Remember, we were strangers in a strange land. We were strangers down in Egypt. That's why the Lord said, "You shall not avoid the Egyptians. You were a stranger in their land." Uh, by the way, the name of the word Egypt means black land. But you got Ishmael over in Egypt's land, calling himself Egyptian. Y'all got that? Yeah. What verse do we finish that? Good. Back down to 7, 17. Back to 17, chapter St. John. A few more scriptures, we out. St. John 17. St. John 17, and this time we're going to pick it up at verse 12, Brother John. St. John 17 and verse 12. Would you get it, my brother? Let's go ahead. While I was with them in the world, uh -huh. I kept them in thy name. I kept them in thy name, yes. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, uh -huh. and none of them is lost, 
for the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. That the scripture might be fulfilled, sisters and brothers. Luke the sixth chapter. Luke chapter six. I, I kept him in your word. I ain't lost none. But the son is the tradition that the scripture might be fulfilled. That's why I always ask him. Y'all see my show sometimes. I always ask him, send your baby dad. <laughs> 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 to whom you yield your members, that's you serve you are. Judas was with Jesus. Probably did some healing. Probably did a few miracles. But guess what? All Israel ain't Israel. You could be Israel in the flesh, but where the mind at? The Lord is looking at the mind system, brothers. That's why we tell people, the Lord wants your mind. Satan is a battle for your mind. Satan, the devil, wants your mind. He wants to make you believe that you can't keep the commandment that they're too hard to keep. Jesus in Philippians 2 and 5 said, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. He wants your mind. That's why the mind is a terrible thing to waste. <laughs> he wants your mind. That thing between your ears. The real computer is called the brain. Right. Come on. St. John, Luke 6, 12 to 16. Come on, Pedro, let's go. And it came to pass in those days yeah. that he went out into a mountain to pray. Yes. And continued all night in prayer to God. Yes. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, whom yes. also he named apostles. Simon, whom he also named Peter, yep. and Andrew, his brother, uh -huh. James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon called Zelotes. Zelotes. Yes. And Judas, the brother of James. Zelotes means he was a Simon was a zealot. Y'all got that? Go ahead. What is his last name? He was a zealot because he had the zealot, which was a sect in Israel. Just like you had the, who else? You had the scribes, you had the Pharisees. Who else you had? The, the other sex. Say again? Yeah. You had the brothers of Berea. You had different sects at that time. Go ahead and read. And Judas, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which also was the traitor. Right. So so you had Judas. You had more than one Judas. And most of the time, we're saying, like Simon, bar Judas. That the bar means son of. So therefore, when, it's more, when they had the same name, it would say the son of. So you can identify the right one. So now, Judas was with him also, wasn't he? <clears throat> Judas was with them also. What verse? There was 16? Man. So now, those are the 12 disciples, and Judas was with them. But he betrayed them, didn't he? So that the scriptures could be fulfilled. He sold himself out for 30 pieces of silver. Sold himself out for 30 pieces of silver. Back to St. John, 17th chapter. This time we're going to verse 15. John 17 and 15. Because they got this popular teacher, which is relatively new and only came in the, uh, what's that, 19th century? The rapture? How many used to believe in the rapture? Anybody used to believe in it? What did they teach you? Everybody. You're going to be taken to heaven. You're going to be taken to heaven. You agree? What else? You're going to be taken to heaven for how long? Seven years, right? But now, if you be taken into heaven, that means you got to be taken into out of the world, right? Let's look at what the book said. St. John 17 and 15. Let's debunk the rapture. Go ahead and read. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. That these take, I pray not that thou not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. To be raptured to be taken out of the world. Or by the world. That, do y'all know the origin of the rapture, where it came from? Two Jesuit priests yeah. that was commissioned by the Pope. Two Jesuit priests that was commissioned by, y'all ever saw these Left Behind series? Yeah. That's, where it, that's, where they, that's the foundation of that. That's the foundation of the rapture, Left Behind. It is, and, and it was marketed. Jesus never mentioned it. The apostles never mentioned it nor supported it, and the prophets never read about it to be taken out of the world. 
That's why Jesus said what? See, that's why the Bible would contradict. The books that let the word of God be true and every man a liar. Only thing that matters is what's written in the pages of this book. Yes. Read it again at 15. Father, in the name of your son Jesus, I adjure you through your word. Do you want people to be taken out of the world? What the book say? I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, uh -huh. but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Oh! That's why you say, and deliver us from evil. Mm -hmm. Did the Lord rapture Joseph out of Pharaoh's prison, mm -hmm. or did he deliver him through it? Yeah. Did the Lord rapture Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of the fiery furnace? Or did he send his angel and deliver him? Yeah. Did the Lord rapture Daniel out of the lion's den, or did he deliver him through it? Yeah. Did the Lord rapture Peter out of the Roman jail, or did he send an angel, open up the gate, slap Peter on the face, woke him up, and deliver him through it? Yeah. There is no such thing as a secret rapture. When the Lord gonna come, He gonna steal some people off the earth. But everywhere I read the Bible, the Lord's second coming is gonna be very noisy. That means it's gonna be very audible. It's gonna be very visual. Clouds rolling back, waves when we're roaring, mountains earthquaking. That don't sound like no secret rapture to me, do it? No, no. Every hill moved out of his mouth, out of his place. Oh man. Uh -uh. Somebody been mistalked, sorely mistalked. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. That's why you say deliver us from evil, sisters and brothers. That's why you say that. St. John, the third chapter. St. John, the third chapter. That's what, today's this lesson just about St. John, 17th chapter. And we are reading everything what the Lord wants is happening, has happened, and will happen. Just something simple I want to bring to Charlotte. Something simple. St. John, the third chapter. We're going to read verses 12 and 13. St. John 3, 12 and 13. When you get it, Brother Jordan, let's go. If I have told you earthly uh -huh. things, yes. and you believe not, yes. how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly Now, all of those who believed in the rapture at one time, did, they, did your pastor ever have you read this? Go ahead. And no man have ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Did anybody ask y'all to read that? Never. You know why? Because I can't say it, and I mean no offense, they were false prophets. You should know them by their fruits. We all come out of somebody's churches unless you're born into the truth. We all come. And no man has ascended up to heaven. Well, Brother Julius, I got you. I got you. Elijah was taken up into heaven. I said, which one? What you mean it's only one? I said, but 2 Corinthians 12 and 2, Paul said Jesus will come back up to the third heaven. You trying to be tricky. You know I ain't. I'm a professional reader. I read the book. I read the book. And no man, now this is out of the mouth of the Lord himself. And I use this, and this is what you use today when you go out and hit the streets. This is what you use. Ask the people when you die and you good, where do you go? They're going to say what? Yeah. Your job is to say which one. Then do like I do. The basic. Genesis 1 and 1. One heaven, one earth. Genesis 2 and 1. Thus the heavens were finished. Then you take them, and then you stick a fork in them by taking them to 2 Corinthians 12 and 2. Paul said, I knew a man about 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I can't tell. Why could Paul tell? Because he was on the road to Damascus and he was blind. A blind man can't tell. Well, he can hear. Yeah. You see that? Oh, my goodness. What verse is that? We finished that. We finished 13. So, therefore, sisters and brothers, no man has ascended up to heaven. Because that is where the Father, the Son, and all the holy angels dwell. But then again, in Genesis, the first chapter, he tells you, he on the fourth day, he created the sun, stars, and moon, and put them in the firmament of what? Heaven. But that's the second heaven. The earth is the first heaven. Everything above the ground 
to as far as the universe go is the second heaven, but the heaven of heavens, you can't go there. Because that is for spirit beings. Y'all got that? Amen. What is the problem? A bird, right? Mm -hmm. right. Leviticus 11 chapter. This is what you, I'm just giving you some tools to evangelize with. Leviticus chapter 11. We're going to get right back to this. I'm just showing you how you go out and evangelize and what Jesus did. Because Jesus said, the book said that Jesus taught the people with authority and not as the Pharisees. Verse 13, Jordan. Leviticus 11 and 13. This is not a part of the lesson. I'm throwing this in to show you, sister and brother, the absolute of the word of God. Go ahead and read it. These are a day which ye shall have an abomination among the fowl. Uh -huh. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. Uh -huh. The eagle and the ostrich and the osprey and the vulture and the kite after his kind. Yes. Every raven after his kind. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> the crows, right? The ravens. Go ahead. And the owl and the nighthawk and the cook cow uh -huh. and the hawk after his kind. Uh -huh. And the little owl and the cormorant and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the gear eagle. A swan is is a, a, a fowl with a long neck, we call them geese. And a, a duck is a swan with a short neck. What do all these fowls have in common? They got how many feet? Two. And they got feathers. Yeah. And they got a beak. Read the next verse. And the stork, the heron, after her kind, and the lap wing in the back. What is a fowl? A bat ain't got no feathers. And he don't have a beak. He got a mouth with fangs in it. He got membrane that he fly with. Fowl is something that flies. How do you know that? I see it. How do you know that? You read verse 20. Read. All fowls that creep, going upon all four, shall be an abomination unto you. Man. Verse 23. But all other flying, creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. Verse 22. Even these Start at 21. Start yes. Yet these may eat of every flying, creeping thing. See, we have been conditioned to not read the Bible. We go by what people say. We go to church all our lives and we go by what Rev say. Instead of reading the book, the book is the boss, like Melvin said. A foul is anything that flies. That's why it said all foul that creeps. That's why I asked y'all, what did the feather fowls have in common? They got two feet, they got beak, and they got feathers. But then I made you read the bat. The bat got two feet. He flies, but he don't have wings, feathers. And he don't have a beak out of mouth with wings in it, with, with fangs in it. Then the book tells you that all found that people are going all four. So now we're going to graduate from two feet to four feet. And they creep. Go ahead, brother. Yet these may eat of every fine, creepy thing that goes upon all four, uh -huh. which have legs above their feet, to leap with all upon the earth. Go ahead. Even these of them you may eat. The locust after his kind, uh -huh. and the ball locust after his kind, uh -huh. and the beetle after his kind, uh -huh. and the grasshopper after his kind. Like the ladybug. Like the grasshopper. But you can't eat the roach. <laughs> you can't eat the ants. Because they got flying ants too. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? But they all fowls. So that's why I went here. Right. Let's, now let's go back. That's why the book said Jesus taught the people, and the people don't like that. You think you know everything. I know what I know. I know what I read. I know one thing. I know you ain't going up to heaven. You're already here. You know, like, start from the bottom, now we're here. We're here, sisters and brothers. First Timothy. First Timothy, the sixth chapter. 
First Timothy chapter 6. Nobody wants to believe the word of God. And when you put this out there among the public, or you belong to a cult. How many of us heard that? All because I read. First Timothy 6, pick it up at verse 3, my brother Jordan, and then we're going to skip. Go ahead. If any man teach otherwise, yes. and consent not to wholesome words, uh -huh. even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. and to the doctrine which is according to God. See, this doctrine, the gospel of the kingdom of God is ordained unto uh, uh, eternal life. If any man teach other thing other than this, but then Paul warns us about the coming of another Jesus and another doctrine and another baptism and another faith. Where do you get Sunday from? Why is it that there's only one Lord, one Savior, one faith, one baptism? Where all these denominations come from? Like your boy Gino says, who's a holiness teacher, uh, preacher. Nobody has this truth about the word of God. I you listening to the old man. I'd be like, Whew. I said, not only is he a graphic, but the bottom line is, I think about it, I kind of like him. See? But remember, saying the devil can take the truth too. The devil knows scripture better than all of us. Sister said, the devil don't know nothing about me. I said, sister, he, know all your, he got all your emails and all your passwords. <laughs> Verse 13, 13 to 16. Let's go. I give thee charge in the sight of God, uh -huh. who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate, witness of the profession. Yeah, go ahead. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead, brother. Which is in this time he shall show who is the blessed and only Pontius Potentate, Potentate uh -huh. the kings of kings and the lords of lords. Go ahead, brother. Who only have immortality. That's why ain't nobody up in heaven but the Father and the Son and the holy angels that didn't sin against them. All the evil angels are down here. We can hang up on the earth. Who only have immortality. Go ahead. Dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto. Uh -huh. Whom no man has seen nor can see. Uh -huh. To whom be honor and power everlasting. Sisters and brothers, that's why the Lord had to create another light because. God dwells in the light. Spirit beings are beings of light. So he created another light, and then he said, let there be light, and it was good. Then on the fourth day, he created three more lights, starlight, sunlight, and moonlight, to give light upon the earth. That's why when the Lord comes, hey, remember, when Jesus comes, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall be turned to red, and the stars will fall, but that is not the end of heaven. That's not the end of the light. Because Jesus had to reign a thousand years. Those scriptures identify the sign of his coming. Y'all got that? So like, but that's not the first time that it happened. When Jesus died on the cross, didn't it get dark? Yeah. It ain't the first time that it's happened. So in order to understand the future, go back to the past. There's nothing new up under the sun. Nothing. Nothing. Back to St. John. Back to St. John. We're almost out. St. John. The 17th chapter. This time, Brother George, we're going to read verse 21 to 23. St. John 17 and 21. When you get it, go ahead. That they all may be one. Now, remember, what is the will of God? What is the will of the, the Father and the Son? Go ahead. At 21. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. Yes. That they also may be one in us. That's why in 1 John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. That means they are one in agreement. Okay? Only two make up God. But they all three bear record but they're all in agreement. Read it again. That they all may be one, as thou, as thou Father art in me. Yes. And I in thee. That's why Jesus said, I and my Father are one. We're on one accord. We're one mind. Go ahead. That they also may be one in us. Yes. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Yes. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. And the glory that 
you gave me, I have given them. That's why the Bible said when we see him, we shall be like him. God is the spirit. We are flesh. But now the Lord is trying to Bluetooth us. You know how you get a new car? <coughs> and you have to pair, pair your radio to your phone? That's what the Lord is trying to do. He's trying to pair your mind. Get it in your mind. See, the change starts up here and ends here. The flesh profited nothing. It holds the mind. It holds the word of God. This is the brothers. This mortal must put on what? But God got the body. He going to change it. The body that you got now, he going to change it. He going to pair it. You got the thinking. And you got to have this thinking until your end, until the end. And when he come and he look at you and you found your name written in the book of life, he going to change you, sisters and brothers. People get upset with Brother Bowie when he said that Enoch is God. But the day he said it, I saw it. I said, wow. wow. Well, Brother Julius, one brother said, but well, Brother Julius, if Enoch is God, that would, mean, that would mean there are three gods in heaven. I said, no, you ever, brother, not understanding the scripture, you ever greatly. How do I say it? When the Lord comes, what's going to happen to the dead in Christ? And when they come out the grave, what they going to be? And what they going to be? They going to be God. Those who are righteous and are alive, when the Lord comes, what are you going to do to them? They going to change their vile bodies that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. And what they're going to be? God. Y'all don't believe that? Because if you believe it, you got to say it like you understand it. Do you have to die to become God? No. So why can't he take Enoch? You see it? He called the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. So he took a man that was righteous, changed him. Yes. He just put him up under invisibility. Yes. Well, Brother Julius, the book said that they without us cannot be made perfect. No problem. The dead come out, the grave, they change, they got. The righteous are alive, they change, they got. Yes. Enoch appears, we all meet the Lord in the clouds, yes. we all come back to the earth on Mount Olives. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Ain't no mysteries. Only thing that you have not heard, understood, or just believed. You haven't been taught it. Anything that you don't understand could be a mystery to you. But the Lord said, I have never hidden up anything from you. Now, the book said the secret thing belong to God. So the secret thing that belong to God, I don't try to peep into because they belong to God. The Lord said, when you come, you're going to know all things. You're going to know it. Can't sin no more. You get your glorified body, you cannot sin no more. The Lord, you flesh and blood, you can sin. Why? Because when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and do that which is wicked, that means you ain't saved. And if you say, what are you saved from? This gospel got to be preached to the brothers. This guy, what we at, Jordan? Finish it. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. See that? I and them and thou in me and that they may be made perfect. They may become God in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. Man. Philippians. And three more after this. Philippians, the third chapter. <clears throat> Philippians chapter three. Y'all with me? Yeah. Hang in there. We're almost done. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians 3. We just got 20 and 21. Philippians 3, 20 and 21. Here, page the turn. I said it, but let's read it. Philippians 3, 20 and 21. When you get it, Joel, let's go. 
For our conversation is in heaven. Yes. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. See, we're reading St. John, the 17th chapter. Right here, the whole message. Thy will be done in earth. That thou, and uh, Paul told you at first, well, we're going to read it. I'm going to get ahead of myself like I always do. Finish it, brother. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. How many times do we have to read it before we believe it? That's why don't set your heart, don't set your mind on earthly things. It's good to have money, and it's good to have uh, good things, but guess what? That stuff go, it's temporary. It's temporary. Like Brother Bowie said, I'm going to be God. Because remember, the day you come out your mother's womb, you're here forever. You don't believe it. Remember, this first step is merciful. Ain't nobody bothering you in the grave. Can't nothing happen in the grave. You don't have no consciousness of nothing. You sleep. You're dead. That's why they say rest in what? Feast. The second death, you don't want. That's what you don't want. Because you're going to change your body and fashion it that it can be burned and feel pain and the skin worms can eat on you. Forever. First Corinthians 15, 50 to 54. 15 and 50 to 54. Will you get it, Brother Jordan? Let's go. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Ain't that what Jesus told Nicodemus in John the third chapter? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Go ahead. Neither do corruption inherit the corruption. Go ahead, brother. Behold, I show you a mystery. I show you a mystery. Uh-huh. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. He showed you that in Enoch. Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Brother said, let's look at the word of translate. I said, I will not. <laughs> you look it up. I'm going to take what the book says. With translate, they should not see death. And then the brother says, support to all men wants to die. That's true, unless God changed you. Go ahead, brother. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, uh -huh. at the last trumpet. At the last trumpet, that's trumpet number seven. Go ahead. For the trumpet shall sound. Yes. And the dead shall be raised and corrupted. See, you got people going to heaven right now. You read this to them. Read it to them. Read that again, Jordan. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, uh -huh. at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, uh -huh. and the dead shall be and raised. And the dead shall be raised. If you're up in heaven and you're saved already, then what needs to be raised? Right. Then what do you need a grave for? The grave is a holding place for the dead until a resurrection. That's why People talk, I'm up in Abraham's bosom. No, you're not. Genesis, the 25th chapter says, Abraham's son, Enoch, and Isaac buried him in the cave of Machpelah. You bury a dead body. Why? Because nobody goes to heaven. Jesus told you no man is ascended into heaven. Stop believing lies and believe what the books say. How do you know? Because I read it. Finish the joke. Shall be raised and corruptible. Uh -huh. We shall be changed. And we shall be changed. Go ahead. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. Must is a strong word. Go ahead. And this mortal must put on immortality. Go ahead. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, yeah. and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the mm -hmm. saying that is written, that the swallow up in victory. And that's just what else you can say here. Now I'm saved. Get your glorified body. Can't sin no more. Can't die no more. Flesh and blood is no longer your life. You're a spirit being. Spirit don't die. It's all that simple, sister, brothers. 54. Go ahead. Good. Death is swallowed up in victory. Why? Because it was added. Death was not a part of creation. It was added. The Lord got rid of animal sacrifice. Now he's going to get rid of death. That's the grave. Take away death, you have eternal what? See that? See how simple the word of God is? Right. It's simple. That's why the book said the simplicity that's in Christ Jesus. But we have been taught a lie by men who have not stood in the council of the Almighty. All these religions. But it's one Lord, one faith, 
one God, one baptism. What happened to what's the name God? What happened to what happened to Dagon? The Lord broke his arm, didn't he? Yeah. Spit him around and made him pay obedience to the Ark of the Covenant, didn't he? You see? Because this God is no God. What did David say when the little Israelite girl told him, go find the prophet that's in Israel. He'll hear you of your leprosy. He went, dipped himself up and down in the Jordan River seven times. Tell us, I'm not the rivers of far, far, and I'm not better than all the rivers of Egypt. But go dip yourself up and down in the Jordan River seven times. Came out, his leprosy was gone, his skin was like a newborn baby. He said, now I know that there's no God but in Israel. If you put the word, <laughs> you put the word of God out right, the people gonna come. Your attitude, your tone, your skill and knowledge, and your understanding will draw the people. He done gave you the power and authority. Put it out there. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. Because you stand on the word of God, not to belittle nobody else. And you don't take this knowledge and abuse it and lord over people. And remember where we all came from. The Lord love a humble and contrite spirit. Amen? Amen. Let's move on. John 17 and one after this one. John 17 and 24. Thank y'all for y'all time. Thank you so much. I apologize for the coffee. St. John the 17th chapter. That's never happened to me like that before. It's a, it's a flesh and body. It's corrupt. John 17, and thank you, Brother Joe, for some fine reading. 17 and 24. Appreciate you, bro. 17 and 24. Let's read. What is the Father's will? Remember, I will raise him up in John 6 chapter. I'm going to raise you up four times at the last day. What else is his will? Go ahead. Father, yes, I will that they also, uh -huh. that God has given me, be with me where I am. That's why he never promised you the Father's kingdom. To him that overcome, but I grant to sit with me in my throne, as I have overcome and sat down in my Father and had stood up in my Father's throne. Not at that time. You get to the Father's kingdom on the eighth day. That's what the eighth day represents. Go ahead, brother. That they may behold my glory, yes, which thou hast given me, yes, but thou lovest me. For the foundation of the world. But I love me from the foundation of the world. The book said, Jesus and the Father, the book, they took sweet counsel together. They came up with a plan. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Man went south by listening to the doctrine of the devil. The Lord, the, the, then the plan of God went to the back. Go down and recover. Give them my words where they may see themselves. Come out of sin. The purpose of going to church is to learn how to come out of sin so you can save yourself. Not to just feel good. I know the sin will make you feel good. But knowledge is the foundation of all things. Because God is a God of knowledge. Come on, brother. That was 24, Zechariah 14, chapter. This is last. Zechariah. Zechariah, the 14th chapter. My last scripture. I hope I didn't hold too long. And then I guess we're going to have a, a question and answer session and a plan, Brother Baldy. Yeah, they got questions. Yeah, they got questions. Time. Let's do it. I'll do my best. Zechariah 14, when you get my brother, read verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. And thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Skip down to verse 4 and 5. We're talking about the return of the Lord. The day of the Lord represents the return of the Lord. The great tribulation is Satan's masterpiece upon the service of God. That's when you go through the three and a half years of the great tribulation, where they're going to try to pursue the Sabbath keepers. That's why I say, pray that your flight be not in the Senate on the Sabbath day. Okay? So now, the day of the Lord represents the wrath of God, which represents the vengeance of God upon all the people that afflicted us. Okay? That's called the day of the Lord. Go ahead. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, yes. which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof to uh -huh. the east uh -huh. and toward the 
west, right? There should be a very great valley. Yes. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north. Yeah. And half of it toward the south. Yeah. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Yea, ye shall flee. Like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Yes. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with you. But well, when the Lord come, he coming with his resurrected and, and, and saved, uh, uh, resurrected and changed saints. Go ahead, brother, in verse 9. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Uh -huh. And that day shall there be one Lord, and his name one. Man, go ahead, brother, in verse 16. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. That every one that is left of all the nations. <laughs> Which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year. All the nations, not just Israel, but all the nations, got to do what, brother? To worship the king. Yes. The Lord of hosts. Yes. And to keep the feast of tabernacles. And to keep the feast of tabernacles, which is the feast of ingathering. And that's what St. John, the 17th chapter, the whole chapter is all about the plan of God for man. Thy will be done in earth. Heaven is straight. All the problems are down here on earth. That's why the Bible told you in Revelation the uh, 12th chapter, rejoice for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. The troublemaker is out of here. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. So therefore, sisters and brothers, the Lord had John write the whole chapter in that 17th chapter. It's all about that will be done in earth sisters and brothers. Heaven is straight and when the Lord come back with his saints, put old Satan and all his angels in the lake of fire and everybody that's in the lake of fire, is just, the lake of fire is just like uh, expandable stretch garbage bag. Mm. It's always room for one more. <laughs> Misery loves what? <laughs> do me a favor and do yourself a favor. Don't be company. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you for your time. Oh, oh, oh.